subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. A crisp autumn morning with a hint of chill in the air, a balcony with a view and a hot cup of tea. Isn't that what we all need to start a perfect day? A magical cup of tea is all about getting the process right, or should I say getting the science right. The right amount of leaves, finding that sweet spot when the tea is steeped to perfection. If you are the kind who enjoys black tea, there is something you'd probably notice very often as you take the first sip from the teacup. A very thin iridescent film forms on the surface of the tea as it starts to cool, cracking when you tilt the cup. If you think this is because of some impurities, you're right. But if you were to make the tea without this impurity, you'd be left with a rather bitter brew. In this video, I will explain why this seemingly inconsequential layer of film on a cup of tea has been the subject of research for nearly two decades. The science behind studying these layers, which is called rheology, and why such research is important for the tea making industry. I am Mohana Basu, and this is Pure Science. Anyone can make a cup of tea with just water and tea leaves but the film may seem to appear at random. Until back in the 90s, the popular belief among London's high society was that this film came from the waxy coating on the tea leaves. But then, in 1993, two researchers from Imperial College London, for the first time, disproved this theory. In a paper published in the Nature Journal, they wrote that they had noticed an unsightly scum accumulated on the surface of a cup of tea when it was brewed in hard water. They did what any scientist would do. They brewed some tea in the lab and using an aluminium scoop, they collected this scum and studied it under the electron microscope. Remember that this is just a few decades after the scanning electron microscope was developed, so no one before had observed tea scum with such close eye. What they found was that the tea scum, which was later found to be tea polyphenols, was coated with white patches, which they realized was CaCO3 or calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is a common substance found in rocks and is the main component of eggshells, snail shells, seashells and pearls. It is also used to whitewash our houses. There were also traces of other metals including magnesium and manganese. What the researchers realized was that these impurities were present in the London water supply. There was no such scum if the tea was made in distilled water. Also, when they added a twist of lemon to the tea, the amount of scum reduced. This is because citric acid, which gives lemon that sour taste, reacts with calcium carbonate to form calcium citrate, which is partially soluble in water. In subsequent studies, the scientists continued to decode more about the film and its composition, what made it harder, what made it disappear. Their experiments suggested that scum is produced by tea polyphenols, the major active compounds present in tea, when they reacted with the oxygen in the air. But this reaction did not take place in the absence of calcium carbonate. All tea leaves come from the same plant, which is Camellia sinensis. While different types of this plant have been produced in different parts of the world through selective breeding, it is basically the leaf processing that determines the quality of the tea variety, such as how it was fermented, rolled and dried, among other things. But this research showed us that the quality and properties of water, its hardness, which is a result of the calcium carbonate dissolved in it, is also what affects the taste of tea. One of the earliest known monographs on tea is a series of scrolls entitled Charging or The Classic of Tea, 
prepared by Lu Yu in the year 762 CE. In his writings on tea preparation, Lu proposes adding a measure of salt while boiling the water. Although salted tea is still commonly made in Mongolian, Tibetan, Kazakh and Himalayan traditions, it is not fully understood why you proposed this salting step. Scientists now assume that adding this salt changes the film compositions on the tea. You must be wondering why I'm talking about the science of tea making. It is because just this week, a team from ETH Zurich in Switzerland actually published a paper investigating the rheological properties of tea film in different calcium carbonate concentrations. Now, what is rheology? Rheology is the study of the flow of matter, usually in a liquid or gas state. It is a branch of physics that has applications in engineering, geophysics and material science for the manufacture of products from cement to paint to chocolate. Now, what the scientists used in the current paper is interfacial rheology, which is a branch that specifically studies the flow of matter at the interface between a gas and a liquid or at the interface between two liquids that are immiscible. That is, they don't mix with each other. Using interfacial rheology, they assess the mechanical properties of the film, the formation of which is affected not only by water hardness, but also by the acidity of the brew, sugar or milk content, tea concentration and brewing temperature. In interfacial rheology, experiments performed involve a metal device placed at the surface of the tea. The rotation of that device is carefully controlled and the resistance to the rotation that the film applies is what allows scientists to determine its strength. Tap water in many regions comes from limestone aquifers where calcium carbonate can make water taste crisper. That is why many homes use water softeners to reduce this hardness in the water supply because the calcium carbonate can build up on tap faucets. But the researchers here also said that if a cup of tea were brewed in perfectly pure water, it would not form a film at all, but then the tea would taste quite bitter. The scientists suggest that to brew the perfect tea, the ideal calcium carbonate concentration is considered to be between 17 and 68 milligrams per liter. Below this, the tea will leave a dry, puckering mouthfeel similar to what is caused by the tannins in unripe fruits. Calcium carbonate levels above 120 mg per liter will lead to a reduced flavor. Now coming to why are researchers so interested in this tea film? That is, what is so important about that film that warrants studying it for decades? The researchers found that the conditions that contribute to the formation of the strongest film, that is, chemically hardened water, may be industrially useful in packaged tea beverages for a prolonged shelf life. Conversely, conditions forming weakened films may be used for making dried tea mixes. The addition of an acidic component like citrus in a dried tea blend will reduce the visibility of the film and add flavor. Understanding this scum also helps the tea industry understand how to keep their equipment clean. The insights to the tea film's strength may be useful in the production of commercial tea beverages and the film residues and stains left behind on the industrial tea brewing equipment. So next time you're enjoying a cup of tea, remember that that seemingly unwanted layer on the cup of tea is actually adding to the flavor. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.